All right, uh, we got Carlos and Paul here. So I was laughing, Dory. I should have that commercial memorized by now, but my computer glitched out in the middle of that last line, so I couldn't read it. So I was like, trying to remember what the hell it said off of memory. <laughs> oh, my God. I should have it down by now. All right. So we're back. We're live from Vegas today. And uh, joining me here in studio, it is uh, great to see. Well, guys, see off and out and about in Vegas. He's pretty much the mayor of this town. Oh, yeah. There, there may be... They may, there might be a mayor elected, but Paul Shortino is truly the leader and mayor of all things Vegas. Good uh, to see you, buddy. Uh, it's good to see you always, Eddie. Yeah, man. I was telling the audience before, you, uh, you're you one of the first guys I know. Like, there's a ton of rock guys that move from L.A. that live here in Vegas now, but you were like, I think you put the flag in the in the dirt out here. Uh, what what year did you come here? Uh, it's been seventeen years. Seventeen years. I've been married to Carmen, whose grandfather was the architect for Bugsy Siegel for the Fl Flamingo. So her family, uh, she's a native. So her family uh, basically moved here in the forties, and the mob brought her grandfather up. He was a professor in architecture at Pasadena. Uh, college, and they brought him up here to a have a legitimized architect finish the flamingo. Oh, wow. So I met Carmen uh, actually uh, 32 years ago at the captain's cabin in uh, California, right across from FM Station. I remember that place. And everybody used to come in there and jam. In fact, Government Mule was formed there. Wow. Yeah, after, uh, after the Almond Brothers played... Uh, Warren uh, Hayes and Alan Woody showed up because Matt Apps was playing drums, mm -hmm. and he was out with uh, Diggy Betts before, and he was he was kind of living at my house, and uh, we were playing every Sunday together, and those guys showed up and tore the place down, and then that was the that was the beginning of Government Mule. Wow, that's amazing. So uh, right. yeah, that that old place, the captain's cabin. I was watching uh, Madlock one day, and they showed a, a, an episode of Madlock at that that little dumpy place. But it it was a lot of fun that that uh, the captain's cabin. But yeah, uh, yeah, I've been here for uh, over seventeen years, but I'm back and forth because my wife's family's. I've been married to her. Uh, this actually this Friday, September eighth, will be our thirty two. Uh, wow year anniversary congrats man congrats so um and of course paul did uh rock vault here for a while doesn't anymore but you did and yeah. um everybody knows paul from uh at one point quiet riot and obviously rough cut and i uh, talked about it earlier i think your license plate even says duke fame doesn't it does it, it does, <laughs> it, does. <laughs> it should we're gonna i want to touch on that in a second but before we go any further i am super excited to see this guy because it's been far too long he kind of I'm trying to track you down for a little while, you know, to get you in here for an interview. And you eluded me, but he's finally here <laughs> sitting right in front of me, Carlos Cavazo. Good to see you, bud. Good to see you too, Eddie. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah, it. man. Where do you live now? Because you flew in to do this pretty much. Where where are you where are you living? Uh, I live in Northridge, California. Me and my wife has a, have a place there and um, just flew out for this to stay with the honorary mayor. Come on. <laughs> That's it. Show <laughs> like you a good time, him, right? Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. That's cool. So you're in Southern California yeah. still. I didn't realize that. Northridge, um, John Five lives there. Yeah, I don't know if you does. ever run into John him. John Sykes, too. John Sykes. Yeah. I've been to both of their yeah. houses there. Yeah. I didn't know you were out we're that way We're close by, well. within a couple miles, I think, of them. You ever see either of them around? I don't, know. Well, I talked to John Five yesterday. I talked to him yeah. all the time. I love Sykes, but he dropped yeah. off the radar, man. Nobody well, sees him. Have, yeah. Nobody has even heard from him. I mean, I have people that have reached out to me that mutual friends and be like, have you heard from him? I go, no, I, I hope he's okay. But Carmine actually spoke to him. <laughs> he is, yeah. Ago. Recently? Yeah, and oh, he, he, he was trying to get... Blue murder back. I know. Day. Yeah, he's trying to get that happening with uh, Tony Franklin. Yeah, and uh, he uh, he wouldn't return. Uh, calls. He's, he's he's out of he's ch totally checked out of the music business and yeah. has been for a long time. It's a shame. Great, great, great. Oh, player. Yeah. talented guy. Yeah. Incredible, talented guy. Vocally and musically. Yeah, know. for sure. So you guys are here together because um, well, you were in Quiet Riot together, right? Yes. You guys at, at one point. But you uh, are here now together because you're both in this new lineup of King Cobra. The new album is out called We Are Warriors. Now, Paul, you've actually been affiliated with King Cobra and have, have worked with them for a little while now, yeah, right? Yeah, I did two albums with them and uh, with the original guys, all except for me. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark didn't want, or Marcy, I don't know 
what he likes to go by. Marcy now, yeah. Yeah, Marcy, yeah. Uh, unruly child. Right. Because uh, Jay Shellen does a lot of uh, work with him. And um, he didn't want to do the project. And then I talked to him, uh, reached out to him to do uh, a duet on a song. Thought that he might want to. That would have been cool. That would have been really cool. On the first record, I right. wanted I wanted to see if I could get him in to do a to do a song because you know he was the you know I I I look at bands as singers except for like Van Halen and Hendrix and certain people like that where they're you know that's them because of their playing but I you usually identify a band by their vocal and and I, I would say that you know this lineup of King Cobra isn't the same lineup with with Mark. Mark had a different voice, and same way with when I joined Quiet Riot, I didn't try to emulate Kevin because Kevin had his own style and had his own vibe, and so I I tried to just go in there and make him proud of what, and make these guys proud of what, how I sang the songs, and 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 they they allowed me to just be me. And That's a tricky thing, though, for a lead singer, and you've been in that situation now a couple times, yep. going into Quiet Riot, replacing Kevin initially, coming into King Cobra, replacing what Mark, now Marcy, did. Um, it's a tough spot because there are times, like if you look at Journey, obviously going and getting a guy like Arnell, they had to get a guy that sounded like Steve Perry and do that. So there's a fine line, but as an artist, I'm sure you want to make it your own, right? You want to oh, do your own absolutely. thing, absolutely. Right? Yeah, you want to put your own identity spin on it, you know? And uh, we, me and Carlos were talking about it last night about, uh, cause Rowan decided he didn't, he worked on the record, but he didn't want to be a part of it because I don't know. Rowan has, Robertson. Yeah, I, I think it has something to do with uh, Rock Vault. I he's busy, he's doing burnt. a lot of stuff. Yeah. He's, he's uh, pretty much the music director now, not Howard Lee. So right. I think the producer, might have laid something on him. I don't know. But uh, anyways, uh, uh, so we're thinking about just going out as a, a one guitarist, uh, which Carlos can cover the whole thing himself, even though King Cobra has always been two guitar players. So, Carlos, how did you get aligned with King Cobra? Because this is your first thing with them, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh, you know, how, how did I get mixed I up did. in this? <laughs> Shortino. I, uh, in his hands. Shortino. I think they, uh, they called me just to see if I wanted to be interested in doing maybe a couple of songs. Yeah. And, and then I, I think I did that. And I don't know how they talked me into doing the, the rest of the record, but, but I did. I, I was very much like John Sykes. I was kind of over the music business. I, well, I was going to ask you because you, you've been kind of like ever since Rat, you kind of been off the grid a little yeah. bit. And I reached right. out to you a couple of times. You're like, yeah, I don't know. You know, we'll see whatever. You re really didn't, I guess you, since you didn't have anything going on, you didn't feel like you had right. much to talk about or whatever. But, um, people miss you, man. People ask me about well, you all the time. I'm so, grateful of that. Thanks. Yeah. So tell me about getting decided well, to jump in well, on I this. Did, I was kind of content just being at home and hanging out with my wife and doing our thing. I, I was kind of over the drama of being in a band. I didn't want to be in a band anymore or even tour anymore. I was kind of over it a little bit, you know, after all the crap I'd gone through over 40 years. And uh, so anyway, they called me to see if I could do a couple songs. I like, sure, because I, you know, I would love to play with these guys. Playing with Paul's great. And you know he's a legend in, in the rock business and Carmine as well. He's a you know American national treasure of rock musicians. Sure. And then to be on a record with Rowan and Johnny Rod as well. You know they're all talented you know people. So there, it was a no-brainer. I said sure, I'd love to do it. And I ended up doing the whole record. And you know the rest is history. I and you know the way we recorded it was kind of odd too because we everybody did it at their houses digitally. It was the first time I ever did a record like that. And then everybody yeah. would send me the files. Mm -hmm. And then I would go through everything. In fact, Rowan came to my house with my studio, and I would hum him ideas, and he would play them in his way. Uh, like uh, Trouble was one. I, I kind of hummed him the idea, and he played it in his own way. It wasn't what I was humming to him. So yeah. I, then I would send all the files. We, we cut everything to a click, mm -hmm. and then... 
we'd send them to Carmine, and then Carmine would put his drums, and he doesn't play like on a click. He plays around the click. So <laughs> then he would send his drums all back, and then we all would have to start all over again and <laughs> re-record the songs wow. that we had already put down. And then when I started sending the files to Pat Reagan, who mixed the album, and I actually gave him production credit because Carmine said, you're producing this and because everybody's sending you stuff. And I'm going, but he's doing, he's mixing stuff and doing some really cool stuff. He should get production. So he gets a hold of me and he goes, tell the guitar players not to send me just tracks with their sound and their effects on it. I want it clean because I'm doing this stuff with Richie Blackmore and, uh, <laughs> He was taking all of this old tape, and he says, I found this great plug-in that he loves, and I think the guitar players are going to love it. <laughs> so there's tracks of them right. playing clean, and then there's tracks of them playing with their sound. So he had both options to do. Sure. Yeah, we would, we would send a, uh, I would, well, me personally, I would pick up a, a, a plug-in that I like. For those of, of you who might not know what a plug-in is, it's a guitar amp modeling sound on the computer. Mm -hmm. And I'd pick one that I would like, and then I would use it and do all my thing. And then I'd send them the clean signal, too, that's just dry, so they can put it in a plug-in of their choice. Yeah. So, and another thing about recording like this too is they can slide things around. You know, like yeah. there was a part that I recorded on the verse of uh, uh, "Secrets Grounded. and Lies." Oh, yeah. I recorded it in the verse, but then Pat slid it into the chorus. Yeah. And it, I didn't say nothing. It sounded so. And great. I, I would better. move stuff around, you know, because. Uh, we were just writing, like right. Ro me and Rowan. He would come <clears throat> over, and he would do all of his stuff at his studio. And then he'd come over to the house. He goes, "Can we re-record -re it here? Because I like re -re I like recording with you. You <laughs> give you you make me want to pull out the best of me." Because then he, he would scrap everything he did at well, his house. That, yeah, well, that's the thing. I mean, and you got, look, both of you guys have been making records for decades with various different bands and what have you. And we're in a time now, and especially since COVID, where people were making records in lockdown like crazy in all different places. I know Carmine's living in Florida now. Yeah. I mean, everyone's kind of scattered. So that is the way a lot of people do make records, where they're sending files around and somebody puts it all together. Um, I just interviewed Dolly Parton last week, who has an album coming out of rock songs. Wow. 30 rock songs oh, with like wow. 50 different guests on them. And I said to her, how many of these people have you actually met? And I wasn't trying to be mean about it, but <laughs> obviously people can just send right. stuff in now. Sure. So, but I would think, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong, as musicians, in a perfect world, Carlos, it's there's still something about being in a studio, right? Looking across to somebody and tracking that way, right? There is. That's, that's the one thing that is kind of strange. It's like there's there's no camaraderie. There's no, you know, band in there to maybe uh, encourage you or to get you, you know, going or whatever. Uh, you know, half the time I'm recording in my pajamas. I just go in there and have my right. coffee and record. I do this radio show in my pajamas. Uh, I only right. have clothes on because you guys are here. Right. I want to spare you the right. horrible vision of that. But, yeah, if there's no guy, yeah, I roll down. You're out of bed. Yeah, let's go. The new technology. Hey, well, the good. one good thing about it is that you can analyze what you're doing yeah. a lot. Sometimes overanalyze. Yeah, you can it. go. You can sleep overnight and, and, and then go. And hey, you know what? I'd like to go in there and change this yeah. part. For me, as, as 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 writing the melodies and lyrics to some of, uh, a lot of these songs, it gave me a chance to go. Hey, I want to go back and fix that. But there is something about that whole the, studio yeah. Yeah. vibe when you walk right. in there. It seems yeah. like they've built a studio for you to have that creativeness. Crumps. The, you know, Hendrix would go in the lady, uh, what was electric it? Lady. L electric lady, yeah. and they would spend months Days. in there, oh, you yeah. know, recording and changing stuff around, or just coming up with ideas. And I think that's what's missing. Yeah, in it's not like, hey guys, let's go have these yeah. beers and go cut this track and yeah. kick some butt, you know? Yeah, or you know, uh, <laughs> just even just the the camaraderie and and the energy. And, and what's <laughs> And what's even worse, sorry to interrupt you, but what's even worse was the video. Please tell me we're never going to do a video like that again. I know. It's like I had to go to a, a green screen studio by so, myself. So we <laughs> should mention that. The new, the K 
King Cobra record we're talking about that, yeah. that you guys are on together is called We Are Warriors. Yeah. And the record, um, the lineup on the record is the two of you with Carmine, of course, who started King Cobra. I, I mean, I saw King Cobra back in the day when Carmine first started it. Um, Rowan Robertson on second guitar, who everybody knows from Dio these days, is in Rock Vault here in Vegas, um, not continuing with, the, continuing with the band, but is on the record. And Johnny Rod, who is an original member of King Cobra as well, and actually was in Wasp after King Cobra. And uh, I saw Johnny a couple of years ago at a charity thing I was at, and he was doing Wasp songs and singing and fronting the thing. He still is crazy as ever oh, but in a good way it's fun yeah. always a fun guy um so this record is out now and there is a video for the title right. track yeah. what were you saying about it carlos well I, uh because we all live in a separate states and all that right. i had to go do my parts by myself and you're up there rocking out all by yourself and right. it's like really silly it's like please why am i doing this you know? well what's <laughs> interesting about it too is that i had to go to someone um here in Las Vegas, friends of mine, Victor and Alicia, and um, I went over to their house. And when you see the video, all the guys with the blonde hair look like they are in the video. I look like I'm pasted because I, they should have put a light behind me because I'm the only one with dark <laughs> hair. So it looks like I'm pasted in the video that it's just like a three-dimensional thing, but they all look like they're, they're It looks together. good. It does look good. But, it, uh, uh, it, it is a really off, weird to film. It's it like an off-shoot uh, of um, the movie with the Warriors. Right. We're in a New York... Uh, people can go on YouTube to King Cobra, and we are Warriors, and check it out. And it's uh, it's got fire. The guy did an amazing yeah, job, job in editing. And actually, Rowan didn't want to be in the video, so we had uh, um, uh, Tavis Stanley. Okay. Who uh, is a local here in Las Vegas that came in and uh, was in the video and wanted to be a part of this. But I think that uh, we're probably just going to go out as a four-piece. Carmine original... doesn't know this yet. <laughs> Carmine, if she's listening, well, I'll get a text from him any second. Um, but the, the original concept of King Cobra too, visually, I remember when it came together. I remember Carmine saying this, too. Carmine had been out with Motley uh, Carmine was playing with Ozzy with Motley opening early '80s, and Motley was one. The singer had blonde hair. The other guy, the singer had blonde hair. The other guys had black hair, and so he reversed it for King Cobra, yeah. where he was the guy with the dark hair. Everybody else had, had the big blonde, blonde hair. hair yeah. Now, Paul, you've got the dark hair. Carlos has got the blonde. Yeah. Are the other guys going to adhere to Carlos and be uh, blonde? Do we well, know? Well, Tavis is blonde, and uh, so Johnny, is Johnny, Johnny John, So it works. The concept <laughs> yeah. is there. I'm the only one. Your, yeah. Carmine Mine has to go blind then, or you He's do. white now. He's, he's great. <laughs> he's great. You know, yeah. So would I be at 70, you know what I mean? I, I can't believe I'm still doing this at this, at this age, you know? <laughs> Carmine, <laughs> nature took its course for Carmine naturally. He finally said, I'm tired of color in the hair, you know? It's every two weeks. So, yeah, he, he went back to white. You know, and uh, I've thought about it, but my wife won't allow it. So <laughs> it would take a long time for this uh, to grow out white. But uh, well, both of you guys look great for for how long you've been doing this, and uh, it's it's uh, it's. I, I had a chance to check out the single in the video. I got the CD here now, so I'll dig into it a little bit. And thank you for bringing me one. Um, this record is out now.